Uh, so, what's behind this door in here? So some of this, uh, so some of the key features to Mudbot printers is ease of assembly. When most people come here, the comment I love to hear from is, I can't believe how simple your printer is. Uh, consequently, we built it out of stage trussing. It goes together very quick. Hey, Jake, turn off the air compressor, please. It has to assemble quickly. We have to be able to get on a job site, assemble the printer, and get printing. If you've been following my journey around the world, then you know I visited almost every 3D printed construction company and visited almost every 3D printed house. I've also conducted interviews with over 20 CEOs and founders from the 3D printed construction industry. I realized the best way for me to increase the number of 3D printed homes in the world was to share the knowledge I've gained in a course that I've built that condenses the like 50 hours of YouTube videos I have into three hours of a guided course to give you instructions on how to 3D print a house from the beginner's perspective. The cost to print a house doesn't begin when you're all ready and the nozzle's going and all your material's mixed. It's the moment you arrive on that site and it's just pins. So no additional lifting devices. We don't need forklifts, telehandlers, uh, stuff like that, which is expensive. I mean, $300 a day for that kind of stuff. A uh, key feature is that the only thing that comes into our print plane is our Z. Our Z comes down. This allows us to print around rebar. It allows us to do stuff like this. While this printer was still set up above this house, we came in and did this for about 20 people from the state legislature. If my gantry is down into the print plane or print area, you can't print close to things. You'd be hitting rebar, you'd be hitting the house. Even right now, the way it's set up, you know, this gantry was down here it'd be knocking into the house. Uh, so it allows us to print, uh, some people are getting like a 4040 printer, but they want to print a 4080 house. Uh, so they're able to print half of it and then print the other half. And uh, so that's one of the features for us. Can you show us the little baby printer over there? What's that? The little tiny gantry system, or is that CNC machine? This one here? Yeah, this, this was uh, one of our first printers. This is what we did all of our are learning on it's a 664 uh, it print a six by six by four feet tall it's amazing when you think you know something then you realize you don't the bigger you go with your printer all your math changes everything changes the length of hose the time in the hose the hose sitting out in the sun the temperature of the hose the frame of this thing is identical to the frame system of like an a net printer you buy on amazon for like 200 bucks yeah, exactly. I mean, it's XYZ. That's, that's why it's so tempting for people to want to jump into this. They're like, okay, I know what a driver costs. I know what steppers cost, linear rail, bearings. And they're like, holy cow. Uh, but people, when they're buying printers from anyone, they're not buying a printer. They're more than likely buying four or five years of failure, watching stuff fall over again and again and again and again. Uh, the chemistry, the... Uh, the way the chemistry needs to change based on temperature and humidity, uh, length of hose has a big part in this. I mean, with this printer, if I'm mixing the same ingredient for this printer or a 50-50 printer, what comes out the hose is not the same. Since you're kind of on the subject, a lot of people fall in love with 3D printing and they are basically ready to buy a printer. Uh -huh. and you're like, you're gonna need a mixer pump system too. They're like, what's that? <laughs> and then that, that's really where a lot of these headaches that you're talking about are that are beyond the simple X, Y, Z motion of the... Yeah, like I said, uh, the printer doesn't work without years of chemistry, sensors, uh, temperature, hose, hose diameter, hose length, all of, every time you change one part of that, everything changes. And so, and it's just impossible. You just, you'll never convince somebody that that's the case. But uh, if you look at the industry, there's about six or seven main players. We've all been doing this for four years. What have we been working on? I mean, if it's, if it's so easy, why is it taking all of us these years to get this far? The challenge with concrete printing is a lot of people are like, what do I do? I order in a cement truck, it backs up, and I just start dumping this into a, a pump. Nothing like that. You can't, to have consistency in your prints and good looking walls, 
you need to have absolute control over all your mixes. That mix is curing. So if I have, if, it, if I even try and mix a yard of material, the stuff going through the nozzle now has good viscosity, it has a good slump to it. 15, 20 minutes from now, it's not going to. So the key to concrete printing is very, very small batches and many of them. You have to be able to get that material after water touches your ingredients, you have to get that through your system in a certain amount of time, depending on your cure rate. You can't mix up a whole bunch of stuff and let it sit there and it's getting harder and harder and harder. You're gonna brick a bunch of equipment, you're gonna brick hoses and pumps and stators and augers and control system. If I lift this, you'll see that our own motherboards, our motion controllers, everything's proprietary to us and we had to build it all, but customers get two or three of these, uh, one control center, but then they have matching toolboxes for all the tools that they're gonna need while they're printing. No matter what happens or what goes wrong, they can fix it, they know where those tools are immediately, and that's, again, part of our, in effect, five month training. So you have a month of pre-training before you even get here, a month of training here, printing every single day, two to three months of post-training before we certify you, and you're unable to run the printer without a certified pilot trained by us. Very fast printer, very large printer, uh, 50 by 75, 3,500 square foot, one level. Our printers print basements, and we essentially do it this way. We have no legs on our printer, and we're able to print the basement walls, put our legs on, print main floor, extend our legs, and print second story. Uh, in theory, third, fourth, fifth. Hasn't been done, but uh, yeah, I'm on the uh, ISO board. Good, with seconds. Yeah and I hear a lot of stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a challenging thing for us to, you know, to actually participate correctly. We would be sharing stuff that would divulge too much information, but I hear a lot of stuff uh, like the testing process for mixes and so forth. People like, you can't just test in a lab a mix uh, and call it good. Your mix is actually changing as you're printing to the top, so it's 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 hard. We want to be helpful at the same time. We don't want to trim two years off from people around the world that are trying to figure out how to get into this game on the cheap and just glean everything they can from the players who invested millions and years to get where they're at. The printer 50 by 70. And 50 by 75. Will it print? that entire length in one layer, or maybe you'll do multiple objects in the print space? Yeah, it's pretty much a floor plan. Internal, external walls, all at the same time. How so. heavy is the printer with all of the things added up, if you were to? Uh, I, I, we, we do a calc on every single printer that's sold so that they know for, and, and we do a master plan if they're gonna put it in a 40-foot diesel trailer, whatever else, where everything goes. Uh, that's always a question they have. How big a trailer do I need for this? So ideally for us, we don't like to take our gantries apart, but when you get over 50 feet, obviously you have to. So we build them so that they can come apart quickly, go back together quickly. Uh, there's a lot of alignment that has to be done uh, to make sure that you're printing a straight line all the way down. So our, our printers are assembled like this very quickly, just uh, you don't want to take it down any smaller than what you have to. But uh, we're able to work down here on the ground. Uh, then we have elevators on each one of the legs that'll lift this up. We put a four foot section in, lift it up again, put another four foot section, and that's how we get to our height. But if we are printing a basement with this right now, that's one of the beauties here is we take the legs off, it can print the basement. Uh, another nice thing too, if we have a walk-in basement or something like that, uh, it's you can't set up a printer at this angle so at one side we would have no legs at the other side we'd have a four foot piece or an eight foot piece whatever you needed 80% of the lots that you're gonna be building on uh, even if you bought flat land they have to grade them because every single lot has to drain independently and so a lot of times you have this kind of a configuration and the printer has to be able to accommodate that and then we have a very very small footprint on our, our Z. This is the only part that goes into the print plane. We wouldn't want our gantry down on the ground, does it work? Uh, so this is the only thing with Mudbot printers that actually goes down into uh, the, the print area. 
with a very, very small footprint. Uh, if, if we have a real wide nozzle, it's hard as well, but our nozzle's literally, uh, you know, this tall, this tall, and it allows us to print with a real high slump uh, instead of a, a wetter mix. Wetter mixes are a challenge because water's an enemy to concrete. You keep adding water, you lose strength. You keep adding water, you add volume, and when it shrinks out, then you get all kinds of cracking. So uh, we learned how to print with a high slump, and the only way to do it for us was to have a, we're, we're pressurized straight from the pump, hose, nozzle, uh, clear to the nozzle. We're fully pressurized to the, it's, it's not even an extruder head. I mean, people think of an extruder when they're talking 3D printing, but nozzle. yeah, for us, it's, it's, you know, it's going to a nozzle, again, it's a piece of PVC pipe. So, uh, and you can change your nozzle sizes very easily this way, uh, a seven inch solid pass, three inch, two inch, half inch, uh, by just reducing or increasing uh, your nozzle width. We're still doing assembly on this here. The team that's bought it, we're, they have six people that are coming out for training. They'll be here in a, another week. So, go ahead, Kyle. Uh, ready to go. Yeah. Now you'll see in your gantry, the further you go, the reason the machines get more and more expensive is you can't have gantry sag. And if you do, uh, you have to be able to accommodate that with lasers, sensors, position sensors that are adjusting your height to make sure that whether your gantry is grouping at all in the middle uh, or has sag in the middle, your print passes are still perfectly level. If you look down the thing, you can see that the gantry is pre-cambered. We do that and that helps a lot as well, but there's a lot that goes into larger gantries. Nothing like the little 664 we started off with. Okay, state-of-the-art mud bots printer right here in a case. Uh, all of our machining is done in-house. Our engineers, they create the drawings, they prototype, first iteration, second, third, fourth. Uh, so we have drawings for every single part that goes into our printers, cost, replacement pricing. Uh, this is one of our mills. We mill parts there. Uh, we have threaders, tappers, uh, CNC lathes. We just, if we need to make a change or want to do something different, there's no way we can send it out to a shop and have it done. So we do everything here and uh, the guys uh, are pretty good at it. My name is Scott Potter and uh, I'm an engineer and machinist and I'm part of the R&D team. Two of my projects that I'm working on are the uh, airless sprayer and the telescoping Z-axis. What's an airless sprayer? The airless sprayer attaches to our the head of our printer and that allows us to mark the footings and uh, lay out the Foot, the, the footprint of the structure that we're building. This allows us to take a 2D drawing and essentially copy it one for one on any flat surface that we want to. How's that help? <clears throat> uh, that makes... Marking, marking spraying on dirt and, and grass, how's that help? That, that, well, I think for one that makes, uh, that takes a lot of error out of play when you can literally have a entire drawing on on the ground. How, how does it help? It helps by removing a lot of uh, man hours and uh, actually printing down the the uh, lay lines of the of the footprint that it's going to print. Cool. One of the biggest things that we wanted to improve on our printer was uh, reducing the overhead size of our printer, and that was by collapsing the size of the, the z-axis. Right now we have we have to have overhead so that when our z-axis goes up that there's room for it to not collide at a set of segments that collapse within itself to uh, get the get the print length that we need without having to have a high overhead it sucks back up into itself so the main uh, purpose for that is when we print outside we print in a tent and this removes us 
from having to have an oversized tent. Cutting presses, uh, you know, we have half a million dollars of machines sitting on the floor at any time. People want machines today. We're competing with China. The uh, labor costs are expensive here. So the more that they can automate, uh, the cheaper it is for them. So we have uh, factories call us, we fly out, we take measurements, and they say we want to automate that, 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 and that. But uh, yeah, it was the revenue from this and USA bought it, so it essentially uh, gave us the ability to start uh, my bots without loans, grants, uh, partners. So uh, yeah, we just stole all the money from CJR for several years up until the point that Mudbots had started selling when we went, when we went to World of Concrete. And uh, then we separated that company off as its own company.